Hi, my name is Kenny from Lemon Squid, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to do this simple camera tutorial in After Effects. So, good luck, and I hope you enjoy. So, the first thing you wanna do is set up your scene. So, you wanna go into composition, new composition, and for this tutorial, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Was um, my last composition, and I'm just gonna leave these settings as 1080 by 1080. And yeah, so once you got this, we can set up our background layer. Um, let's just go for like a kind of white, but not fully white. Something like this. And this will be our setting for the rest of the tutorial. So once you got this down, we're just gonna set up some objects in your scene that we can use on your camera. And I'm gonna go for some circles because everybody loves circles. Uh, you can pick whatever you want. I'm gonna go for a purple circle for a lemon squid. And you can do it like this. If you want a clean, uh, rounded circle, you can hold shift and make a perfect circle like this and center it like this. Got our perfect circle here, and I'm just gonna duplicate this layer, drag it to the side, and change the color to yellow. Like that. So once you got your circles done, uh, we can start making it more 3D. I added this extra red circle so I can show you the camera effects better, but you can choose to leave it out. It's really up to you. Uh, one thing to remember: always add your motion tile. Uh, motion tile, motion blur <laughs> to your layers so uh, when it moves it looks all fancy schmancy so yeah uh, the next thing you want to do is add your 3d layer options which is this little cube option here and basically what this does is it sets up these circles to be used as 3d layers so most of the time I just leave my background layer, which is our white solid here, as a, a free layer. I don't really touch that with the 3D um, cube thing. <laughs> so you can leave that or if you want to edit this too, you can always just hit that, but I choose to leave it for this tutorial. So this next part is when I start explaining how to do 3D. What you want to go, um, what you want to do for this part is go into one of your circles and hit P on your keyboard and that will give you your position um, uh, keyframes or uh, uh, values as you see here and you can change these if you want um, and you can also keyframe these so it will change over time so it will look something like this you know but what we're going to do for this one is we're just going to set these circles so they're in different areas of the scene. So what I like to do is I set two views so I can see what it looks like on top and what it looks like to the normal camera. And I hit P for all my layers so it gives me the position values as seen here. Now what we're gonna edit is actually the Z value for all your position layers. So when you move the Z um, value in one of your layers, you can see that it moves back in the scene and it also shrinks down your circle. So you can move these back or forward, closer, or further away. It really does depend on you. For this one, I'm gonna set one all the way at the back here. Um, I'm gonna put it a little bit further back. And I'm gonna leave one here. And I'm gonna move one forward. And I'm just gonna move this one up and this one down. Um, you can actually do that by moving these keyframes, uh, the X and Y keyframes, if you wanted to. So I'm going to move this one up, this one goes down, and yep. So this is pretty much what we have so far. And what we're going to do is we're going to have our camera make these circles move in different motions. So it looks more um, intricate and gives it more depth. So once we have our circles done, we can finally add our new camera. 
Now, there is a shortcut way to do this, but for easier um, understanding for new uses of After Effects, I'm just gonna show you here. Uh, you can go up to Layer, New, and you can hit Camera, or you can right click on an empty area, New Position, and then hit New Camera, and see here. And what I want you to do is copy the settings as you see here. These settings are really important if you want to have a very detailed look in your camera. I'm just going to call this Cam1. You really don't have to name it. It's just up to preference if you need to. So once you get our camera down, this gives us a little, uh, a little idea of what we're working with. So you see, this is our kind of camera starting point and the objects will usually stay within the camera range. You notice how when I added the camera, this circle and this circle and this circle will all change their positions in perspective to the camera. Now you can always change this. You can always go back into your shapes and move your circles like forward and back and uh, across the screen, making them smaller or bigger. I'm just gonna leave my shapes like this because I like the way they are and I yes so we've got our circles prepared the next thing that we want to look at is your um, your options for your camera so if you click on the drop down arrow on your cam layer and you click on camera options this gives you a whole variety of options you can mess with but pretty much the only ones you want to focus on for this tutorial are your focus distance which changes your focus distance of your camera as shown here and your aperture i'm not sure if i say that right but i call it aperture uh, <laughs> uh um yeah just this point and this point that's all i'll be focusing on this you can really change a lot here your zoom distance changes um uh your basically just your zoom distance as seen here but i'm gonna show you an easier way of doing that instead of using these to keyframe so i'm gonna keep these settings as is i would suggest changing these to your focus distance and your ap i'm just gonna call it ap because i know i'm pronouncing it terribly but i i'm gonna leave them as they are for this tutorial so the next thing you want to do is set up a null layer that's on your camera. You can do this by going into layer, new and hitting null object here. Or you can just hit um, a P or S or whatever opens up a keyframe or uh, a keyframing option here and hit new and null. So now that you've got your null, just remember that you need to have your 3D layer option here or you won't be able to do any 3D animating and you want to link your camera to your 3D null as so. So once you got this, it's pretty much uh, complete. All you want to know is you can separate your dimension, oops, <laughs> separate your dimensions here and pretty much edit it any way you like. Now notice when I change the position of the null object here, the circles don't move in uniform. They kind of uh, move in different areas of the screen by themselves. But it does give that little depth to it. So it gives that little cool appeal that um, a lot of editors want. So to keyframe this, it's pretty simple. You can just go into your positions, um, hit one keyframe one place and move it across to another place As so so we get that little movement here I'm gonna just move this keyframe off the screen whoops you can hold shift to move it faster or slower um, no not slower <laughs> faster and yeah so you want to hit F9 to ease ease, that's what I did here, sorry if I didn't clarify that. You can also go into here, keyframe assist and go easy ease. And you want to go uh, click on one of your keyframes and click on the graph section. And uh, if you understand graphic, uh, that's great. <laughs> uh, basically what I'm trying to do is have the solids or the um, objects come in really fast 
So I'm gonna move this keyframe so it's arching down. If you understand um, grass, this will be a fairly easy concept, but for new people, basically the curve at the start, the more inclined it is, the faster it'll be. So if I have the graph like this, it'll be more sped up at the end of the transition. And if, the, and if I have the graph like this, it'll be more sped up at the start of the transition. So if my computer will load this, you can see that the objects just come into the scene, both at different distances to the camera. And it gives it that cool appeal. Now you can also change your, um, you can also change your zoom distance as I mentioned in the camera before. What you want to do is hit your Z option, which is what we use to edit these um, circle sphere kind of things. And we can change this. So what I want to do is have the objects come towards me or towards the camera. So I'm going to boost this up so it's like this. So it comes in and it exits by zooming into the camera. So what we're going to do is easy ease this again. And since we wanted to speed up at the end, as I mentioned before, you want to have the curve at the end of your transition like this. And there we go. So we're going to have a slide in and a zoom in. Now, a lot of people uh, like to have a lot of depth. Some people like to have a little depth. It really depends on the kind of edit you want to have. But usually you want to have a lot of depth. Um, the, the tutorial that I showed here doesn't really have a lot of depth, but you can extend these objects if you wanted to, to this object being way further out here, or this blue purpley circle being way closer. So it's really up to you. Now that I've described how to change the focal distance and your positions, adding depth and all that stuff, I just want to give a brief explanation of a, a shake you can do here. It's completely optional so you don't have to do it, but if you want a small shake in your vertical axis or any of these axes to be honest, you can always just use a bounce expression. So what I do is hit Y on my, um, y on my keyframes here and I drag this over like one or two spaces, um, I'm just going to move it two, and then I add another keyframe right here and move it either a little down or a little up, it's um, up to you there. And then what I do is I click my first keyframe on the layer here and hit Control Shift F9. Now I'm not sure what it is for Mac users, but I'm pretty sure if you're a Mac user that's comfortable with After Effects, you will know what that means. But basically it sets up a keyframe like this. Don't ask me what it is, because I honestly don't know. It's just um, something that I picked up. So we have this weird looking bump at the start of our frame. But what we're going to do is we're going to add um, an expression to this so it'll smooth it out. So hitting Alt on your keyboard and clicking, um, uh, left clicking on the stopwatch, it opens up this expression um, area that you can add in. I will check in a preset expression that I use or that I have in my folders. I'm going to leave the link to that in the description that you can all snag. <laughs> And basically what this does is gives it that cool little bouncy shake that you see. And one last thing that I want to add on is if you want that even better, that even better look, you can always go into effects and presets, give my computer some time, it lags out a lot. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a drop shadow, oh it lagged out, give me a second. <laughs> So in that brief moment of chaos, I added some drop shadows to my objects as seen here. You can copy my shadows as seen here. Usually I have one drop shadow that goes one way that's more defined and one drop shadow that goes in the opposite direction that just has increased di distance and softness so it gives it more depth. So after you've done all this, you should pretty much have your complete transition as shown here and the changing focus points. And uh, that's pretty much your transition done. 
you can really adapt this to a lot of things i will probably pop up some examples of how people have used this um, as seen here i'm not sure if i add this but yes but yes <laughs> but yeah you can pretty much add this to a lot of things and make your edit super cool and i hope this tutorial helps give it a thumbs up subscribe and stay tuned for more this is kenny from lemon squid signing off Thank you.